In this video, I'm going to show you some of the most thrilling places for night photography in southern Alberta. And the best part is, no permission is required at these locations, they're easy to access, and you're going to get some great night shots while you're at it. The GPS information for all these locations will be in the description below. The first stop is going to be Dinosaur Provincial Park. A lot of people get Dinosaur Provincial Park mixed up with Drumheller. They're two separate areas. Dinosaur Provincial Park is located about half an hour north of Brooks, Alberta. And this park happens to be the easiest place in southern Alberta for night photography. The easiest place is to park at Fossil Viewing Area Number 1 along the Loop Road. From here, you can get set up within 100 feet of your vehicle and take a variety of shots in different directions. You can shoot Milky Ways, Auroras, and other night events here. There are other places within the park that you can shoot from as well, but they will require a bit of a hike. If you go here on a bright moon night, you can walk around this park without a flashlight. Number two, the Drumheller area. Getting photos of the Badlands here is not nearly as easy as it is in Dinosaur Provincial Park, but there are some easy spots. My favorite one is the Hoodoos. In May, you can get a great shot of the Milky Way if you have the right lens. And when the auroras are bright, you can also shoot the auroras here. But once you are shooting at the Hoodoos, you're once again about 100 feet away from your vehicle while you're getting your night shots done. And as you probably know, there's no services here and the nearest town is Drumheller about 15 minutes away. The little church near the Dinosaur Museum is another great spot. And once again, you're about 100 feet away from the parking lot. This is an amazing place to shoot auroras. If you do want to venture into the Badlands, Horseshoe and Horse Thief Canyons are pretty much about the same. But it does require a little bit of effort to walk the half a kilometer down to get to these kind of shots. Number 3, Red Rock Coulee. This is a nature preserve about 25 minutes south of Medicine Hat, Alberta. There's hundreds of these big red boulders in the park. You can pretty much shoot in any direction, and you're very close to the parking lot while you're here. You do have the option to venture even further if you want to shoot some different locations, but if you stick in the main viewing area, you can shoot in any direction, which means you can get Milky Ways and Auroras and other night events here. There are no services here, and Medicine Hat is the only town that's open in the middle of the night. Number 4. Writing on Stone Provincial Park. This is in the southern part of Alberta, about 30 minutes east of Milk River, Alberta, and just a few kilometers north of the Montana border. You'll be able to shoot the Milky Way here pretty easy, but it probably is too far south to shoot the Auroras. The easiest place to shoot here is at the parking lot at the Visitor Center. This area of the Badlands is very close to your car, and it's not that difficult to walk around. Sometimes I've gone down into the valley and shot along the Fossil Trail, but that's about one and a half to two kilometers each way. There are campgrounds here, and of course they have 24-hour bathrooms, but the nearest town with services in the middle of the night is going to be Tabor, Alberta, about an hour away. Which reminds me, when you're doing night photography in rural areas of Alberta, you should already have your gas, water, and snacks before you go out. It's kind of rare to have 24-hour services in the middle of nowhere. Next up, we got Banff Town Site and Area. 15 years ago when I still lived in Banff, this is where I started learning night photography. It's very different now, it's a lot more crowded. But there are some great spots. Cascade Pond is a great place to shoot the Milky Way in May and June. You can park your vehicle in the parking lot and walk about 200 feet and get some reflection shots off the lake. And of course, Two Jack Lake, which is just down the road, you're going to get similar shots here. At Two Jack Lake, there's two ways you can shoot it. You can park in the parking lot and go down to the lake and start shooting. Or my favorite spot is, is to use the pullout overlooking Two Jack Lake and shoot from here. Neither of these spots are going to be good for Aurora pictures because you're facing the wrong direction. Then there's Lake Minnewanka. Ten years ago, I can go to this place and be shooting by myself in the middle of the night, but it's become very popular over the years. This would be one of the best places to shoot auroras in the Banff area. There's limited parking here, so you might have to park your vehicle near the docks and then walk onto the dam itself to get the shots that you want. And while you're on Lake Minnewanka Road, you might as well stop in the Bankhead if you've got a little bit of experience. It's a really cool ghost town, but it's not easy to access but there's some really cool abandoned buildings in here. And of course, there's Vermilion Lakes Road. 
There's a handful of pullouts here where you could easily park your car, pull out your tripod and start shooting within minutes. This is also one of the easiest places in the Banff area to start shooting night photography. And on a night when there's bright auroras, you should be able to see them from here. If you are driving to a location at night and you do notice other night photographers, make sure once you've parked that you turn your car lights off immediately. This is just really good photographer etiquette. You don't want to ruin other photographer's shots because your car lights are on. Next, just down the road from Banff is Castle Mountain. There's a really cool spot you could shoot Castle Mountain from right along the river. I've been trying to get the auroras here for years, but it's always cloudy or I'm too late. There is a bridge that crosses the river near Highway 1 in the intersection with Highway 93. If you park along the bridge, there's a gate that you have to open and close. And once you get through the gates, you're going to be able to start shooting at night, not that far away from where you parked your vehicle. It can get kind of slippery here at night, especially in spring. Another really cool spot to do night photography is Moraine Lake. It's almost impossible to get in here during the day anymore. But if you go here in the middle of the night, you're going to get any parking spot you want. A lot of people go here to shoot the Milky Way, but you should only do that once you have experience. It's not a very easy spot. But when you go here on a full moon, this is one of the easier spots you can shoot from in the mountains. There's the lower viewing area, and that's what I recommend for beginners. You're only a few feet away from the parking lot. But if you feel more adventurous, you can climb up the rock pile and shoot from the top as well. Next, just down the road from Moraine Lake is Lake Louise itself. You have to walk a little further from the parking lot to get a shot, but because it's so easy, I do recommend you try here as well. You're facing the wrong direction to get any aurora shots, and it's probably too much light pollution for Milky Way. But it's still an easy shot nevertheless. But I understand they just started charging for parking here. For pretty much most of 2021, they had Pato Lake closed, but now it's open again. This is probably the best place in Alberta to be shooting the auroras if you get a chance to. I've been trying to do this for years, but it's always cloudy. It's just north of Lake Louise on Highway 93, and it does require about a one kilometer walk to get to the viewing area. However, if you're going to be visiting in the middle of the night, I usually just park up the hill where the tour buses are supposed to be, because they don't have tour buses in the middle of the night. Now you only have to walk a couple hundred feet to get to the viewing area. And there's no cell phone coverage at Pato Lake or the next spot, which is Bow Lake. It's just down the road from Pato Lake. Once you park your vehicle, you can make it a short hike to the edge of the lake and start getting these great night shots. I've shot the Milky Way here, but you're not going to get other night events like auroras very well. And if you walk a little bit further, there's this bridge, so you can have an interesting foreground subject. If you're going to be shooting at Pato Lake, you might as well take the short trip to Bow Lake and capture this place as well. There are a couple of other places in southern Alberta that you can get great shots at. I didn't put them on this list simply because I couldn't find a place that was easy to pull over and then start getting great shots just a few feet away from your vehicle. One of those places would be Waterton. It's a great park and I love being here. But every time I show up, I always get forest fire funk. Cameron Lake in August was a great place to shoot the Milky Way, but in the rest of the park I found I had to walk quite a lot to get the right shot. Crow's Nest Pass is pretty fun too. There's an abandoned mine on the side of the highway you can shoot. Lumbreck Falls you can shoot the waterfalls at night and get a little bit of the sky from the viewing area. Kananaskis Country does have a whole bunch of places to get great shots at night, but again they take a lot of effort to get to. I did find, however, Wedge Pond was pretty cool and easy to access, and Mount Lorette Ponds, and I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. This might actually be a really cool place to shoot auroras from. The problem is every time I go here, there's no auroras. Once you get out of your car, you can just walk across the bridge, and as a bonus, you're going to get reflections from the lake. I'll spend more time in Kananaskis this fall trying to find more locations, and I'll make a separate video for those. When you're doing night photography in southern Alberta, always take your safety very seriously. I highly recommend you visit these places during the day before you shoot at night. You want to look for all those hazards. If you have any questions or comments, or more importantly, if you have places that I missed that I should have included in this video, please leave them in the comment section below, and hopefully I'll get a chance to visit them this fall. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video.